I finally All right. cracked the order of the green screen because y'all don't need to deal with this mess. <laughs> and, and now we're live. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's, it's less effort for me to buy a green screen than to clean up behind clean me. Up. <laughs> oh, that's great. So uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, we are uh, we're on the IBM developer Twitch trend. Um, and we have two special guests today. It's normally just me and Paul, um, but we have two more. So first of all, Paul, who are you? Uh, I am Paul. I'm still the same person I was last time we streamed. Although that was, what, two weeks ago? ago? Did we skip one? Yeah. Yes, I it was because there was a holiday in the way. Oh, uh, holidays. I know. Oh. You know, I have lived here for 10 years, and still the way I find out about our public holidays is when I'm the only one that shows up, used to be to work, <laughs> now to Slack. <laughs> and like a couple of hours in, I'm like, Oh, it's one of those days. <laughs> I was born here and I have that problem. Right. Well, because in Australia, we don't have 4th of July. It just goes straight from the 3rd to the 5th. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, best okay. Jokes. All the best, best jokes. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here for the c comedy, uh, champagne comedy, or a sparkling wine comedy because it's not from the... Uh, you, know, you know, from France, Paul. France. Yeah. Uh, oh, but I am from uh, VMware. I should mention that. I am a developer advocate at VMware. And that's all you need to know about me. And we have someone very dark over in on, on the right hand bottom screen. Who, who are you? Uh, hi, I'm Steve uh, Martinelli. I work for IBM also as a developer advocate. And I joined today because I had the pleasure of working with Paul and Kevin for many years in a previous role. So I wanted to say hi to them and see them. Hi guys, nice to see you. Hi. Okay, that was great. Uh, you can leave now. Yeah, now, now he just just he just GTFOs right now. Yeah, yeah. he's just done. <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, and hi, uh, hi, I'm JJ. Uh, I try to keep the uh, these these three gentlemen wrangled and and moderate this conversation. Uh, I'm a developer advocate at IBM Cloud also, um, and today. Kevin is our, our special guest. And Kevin, please introduce yourself and kind of describe uh, your project here for us. Uh, my name is Kevin Carter, and I'm with Red Hat, uh, working on- uh, That's, Don't you mean IBM? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm with, uh, with Red Hat working on the OpenStack platform. and. Uh, in my free time, I decided that uh, I wanted to take my uh, try a hand at creating a new project. So here I am. So, so what's the goal of the project? Like, what were you trying to accomplish with this? Well, first of all, what's it called? Yeah, that's a, yeah, yes. yeah. It's, yes. it's like an. Uh, uh, it's I've been saying it octa, uh, but it's like an octahedron. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's octa. And what? Why is it named that? I thought it was cool. Is there anything eight-sided about it? <laughs> uh oh, did we lose him? Infinity and beyond. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there, oh, there he oh, is. Oh. Oh. Uh. oh no, modern, modern day computing at its worst. Am I cutting out? Yep. yep. Yeah, you are cutting out. Yeah. We can thank uh, Time Warner. <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh, yeah, anyways, um, yeah, it was. It's called Octa because uh, it's it's uh, you know trying to be well-rounded. Uh, you know, it's uh, like I said, an eight is a you know vertical infinity symbol. So that was a lot of little symbolism there. But uh, there really is no rhyme or reason why it's called that. I'm terrible at naming things. So like originally the the project was called Server Deployer, and uh, <laughs> nice. I was like, well, I, like I need it. something that's like more interesting. <laughs> and so I came up with this, uh, and then uh, um, the the little logo I drew was uh, you know largely inspired by M C Escher, um, you know just. The, the whole point of the application is uh, being able to deploy targets, whether it be a server, uh, whether it be a virtual machine, contain a container. Um, or a serial device, even. 
Cool. Um, and so, yeah, um, I've got. So I can uh, configure I've, my uh, Cisco switch with it. Yeah, you probably could. Well, so assuming you can connect to it over USB or or something local to your laptop, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, so I have a, I have a bunch of little uh, ESP devices that I use for my home security system. And I was like, well, it'd be awesome if I could just configure all four of these at the same time over a USB switch. And so I added a serial connector for it. And that's Ooh. quite literally what it does. Nice. Yeah, so nice. Uh, anyways, the, the whole point of the application what came about because I was, I was trying to deploy a whole bunch of containers and they weren't quite working right. Um, and so I was like, well, I'm going to start deconstructing these. And, and I started running ans ad hoc Ansible commands for the, the run and copying files over and seeing if I could execute them. Mm -hmm. That wasn't, you know, that was getting me to where I wanted to go. But uh, I, was, I was in this kind of debug hell. And I was thinking to myself, I wish I could just run this container file and it would produce what it would in a container on a server that I don't have to go and start the container and stop the container and deal with the whole uh, yeah, like uh, craziness in the shell and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. I uh, when you say yeah. container file, that's the like unbranded generic, uh, unbranded Docker generic file. Docker file. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Unbranded generic. Uh, I speak Podman Docker file. Uh, um, so the uh, but yeah. Anyway, they uh, the, the Docker file spec. So I I took the entire Docker file spec and made it so that uh, Octi could deploy it. Obviously, like on a serial connection, there are some things that just aren't aren't relevant. So I filter all those things out. Was, and on a oh, go ahead. Was there a reason why you wrote it in Swift? Oh, I wanted to ask that question. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I was trying to reach more developers, actually. Um, so Wait, uh, I, I start. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> a lot of developers run on you know the, the on on a Mac platform. They run hmm. Mac OS. Mm -hmm. Swift mm -hmm. is a native Mac language. And if you're running uh, OS, I think 10.12 or later, it, it just is, it's there. It just kind of works. The, the native library is there. Um, so what I wanted it to doesn't do need is, to be com is it, be com is it compiled? It, it still has to be compiled, but okay. uh, you can take the binary that's that I've published on my GitHub, plop it on your system and execute it. OS X is going to pop up and be like, hey, you know, like this is an untrusted thing. You should probably think about this. And then you go, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. And uh, <laughs> I accept your security things. And then it, uh, uh, then it just works. But it, uh, and Swift runs on Linux. So I was, I was thinking, uh, how do I reach more people with this tool? Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, writing it in Swift makes it so that more people who are doing development on a Mac OS platform can use the tool. If you're doing development on a Linux platform, you can use the tool. I mean, uh, the tool itself was written on a uh, Solus laptop, uh, a laptop, an X1 Carbon running Solus Linux um, uh, with Docker containers with Swift inside of it in VS Code. So I mean, like I, I pretty right. much used all the things. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, 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 the whole point was that you know, like I said, reach more people. So Swift. Uh, the other thing too, I mean, Swift is super fast. It's a, uh, it, the language itself is, is, it's an incredibly fast language. It's type safe. Uh, it almost, it's type safe too, to the point of like mind numbing frustration. Um, so, uh, but uh, I mean, but in doing that, I've, I've, I feel like I've written better code. You know, that's uh, uh, the the bugs have been fewer. So, uh, so, so don't get me wrong; there are still some significant bugs there. Uh, like, <laughs> well, I mean, it's still software out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so my hesitation with with this why by you choosing Swift and my 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 curiosity here is, I'm a horrible developer, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like I, I know this. I know this for a fact. A anyone um, that follows this stream knows this. Yeah, fact. Knows, knows <laughs> I'm a horrible developer. <laughs> Um, I don't want to have to learn a new, another language. Sure. Tell me on why I should at least spend the time to get the, the foundation of Swift. Like, how did you, well, apart from getting more developers, there's got to be another, like, uh, for instance, there's always that argument between like Go and Rust for system, uh, system programming and things like this. Mm -hmm. And now it sounds like Swift has just kind of like edged its way into that conversation in my mind. So tell me, tell me more right there. 
I don't really have a whole lot to add there. Um, you know, like quite literally, uh, I started when I when I uh, I have some assets in the repo, and it was there's a picture of a whiteboard, and I was you know like, how am I going to write this app? What am I going to do? Yeah. And I started off with like, obviously, I need to write this in Rust because, like, that was just my mental model. Um, and the 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 truth of the matter was is uh, I was like, well, maybe not, maybe mm -hmm. I don't. And so the uh, I started kind of tinkering around and seeing what was out there, and I was curious about Swift. So I made sure it checked all my boxes, like mm -hmm. compiled language, uh, yeah. uh, uh, works on Linux, uh, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, and has most of the. Yeah, that's not that doesn't work yet. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. that's fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, TLDR. Uh, uh, this is my spare time project, <laughs> uh, but uh, the uh, you know I, I just needed to check out you know what what I needed from it, um, mm -hmm. and and Swift kind of checked all those boxes. Uh, nice. I, and I knew no Swift before going into this, like zero. I mentioned that on our little Twitter thread mm -hmm. there. I, mm -hmm. I quite literally was like, I'm going to learn Swift, and I read the docs, and then I watched uh, Chris's YouTube videos, and you know two three weeks later, I had the app up. Um, That's crazy. That's so awesome. while I could say, yeah, it's another language to learn, I can say also say it's pretty easy language to learn. There's a, one of the um, kids that I mentor is um, kind of like he interned for IBM uh, last summer and I was mentoring him was Tanmay Bakshi, like mm -hmm. kid genius kind of guy. Uh, he loves Swift, does everything in Swift. Uh, as much as he can um it's his favorite language and then python coming up second so there's definitely a reach there uh you're not wrong and he's big on the he's big into ai and data science machine learning mm -hmm. and swift actually has a project called um swift for tensorflow yeah yeah i saw that and it's um because python wasn't really meant to be like a data science language from the big from the get-go right it wasn't signed that way so you with Swift for TensorFlow, they're rewriting TensorFlow but for Swift in Swift, and it ha kind of has a lot of the, um, uh, you know, yeah. stuff like I, so, I can't qualify the numbers. Like I haven't like actually done mm -hmm. a comparative analysis uh, myself, but on the Swift page, uh, you know, talking about the language performance, they say it's somewhere it, around ten percent faster than Python, and yeah. two or three percent faster than Objective C. So yeah, it's, it's 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 pretty quick. It's very quick, yeah. Yeah. So that I mean that was why I chose Swift. The uh, I feel like uh, it was uh, a good language that natively works on a platform that a, a bazillion developers already use. Um, yeah. And for people like myself who are going to run on a Linux machine, uh, it works. Nice. Cool. Reasonable enough. So JJ, since you're sitting there at the source code, mm -hmm. where's the like the primary like main.go or equivalent? So under GitHub workflows, under release.yaml? No. No. Not even, a not, not even a giggle. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna tell yeah. funny jokes if you want people to laugh, JJ. Oh boo. boo. <laughs> that third to fifth joke. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing right, so main.swift. Yeah, yeah, main.swift. Oh. Oh, that's, I had no idea Swift was so easy. One line yeah. of code to do all of this. <laughs> so that, like, from a, a code progression, main.swift, which calls the Octa CLI, which actually is in the router file. The hierarchy that's here is is totally optional. From I mean, when you compile a language, it flattens it. So you know, it's not like Python where you have to you know import module, import module, import module. Right. If you look at the imports, it's like I import so foundation and spinner. Looking looking at this right away, uh -huh. it looks like the bastard love child of Go and Python. I I got a lot of that feeling like with sprinklings of JavaScript. <laughs> My head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> cool. 
So obviously it's using the, like the, does it care about the spacing? Like, cause it's got the colons that are delimiting the cases. Uh, so oh, is that, technically is no. Ifs and stuff? Oh, uh, I see, no, it doesn't do that for ifs and stuff. Yeah, well, no. It's just case, okay. Those are, case, that, yeah, it's a, that's in Swift, you can write if, else, else if, you know, et cetera. Um, yeah. But you can also write switch. And so in this case, yeah. the switch is saying, hey, give me a count of that array. And then I'm yeah. going through the potential cases. Cool. They, and awesome. that's the, from what I've read, uh, Grant, I'm probably, be, you know, crucified creating a flame war of some sort. But from what I've read, that's the preferred way. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, because I guess Go went down the path of there's never any reason to have a case statement because you've got if else, right? Or did Go end up adding case in the end? No, no, there's no yeah, I don't think they case. Do. No, no. Go, Go has some strange ideas about purity that I find amusing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. uh, so yeah, so, like there's there's a bunch of comments there, you know. Uh, that's a, a, a method that I, I actually I proved out using a library called Alamo Fire. And then it was working pretty well. And then I went Alamo to go Fire? and Alamo Fire, yeah, it, which is a, a network library, uh, which is actually spectacular. It worked super well, uh, hmm. but it's not compatible with Linux at all. Um, so <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, well, uh, they're working on it. It's, it's just not there yet. So hmm. I, I had to back that out. I'm instead going to re-implement all that in uh, Vapor, if you've ever heard of Vapor. Vapor is a collection of libraries uh, for Swift that's server-side Swift. Um, I use a little bit of Vapor. I use their, uh, their crypto library and a couple other little things, but I'm going to start using more of their tools. And JJ, if you go to the top So what of... you're saying is we don't need to remember the Alamo fire. Yeah, no. Hey, it was a cool hey. name. Uh, right? But it, are you still are you in San Antonio? You are, right? I am in San Antonio, yes. <laughs> Home of the best tacos. Hey. Austinites <laughs> over here. Hey. That's why you said it. <laughs> That's why I said yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to up wrong. my barbecue game. Like, but our idea of a good taco is torchies, so he's not wrong. Breakfast tacos are a religion. We, we can agree on this. I'm from California originally. Uh, we have breakfast burritos there. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> God, you, my brain hurts. Steve's in Canada. He's hurts. never heard of any of these strange foods. <laughs> yeah, we just eat moose or something. Who knows? <laughs> Don't you put mayo yeah. on your fries up there? Or gravy or something weird like that? No, no, no. It, it's relish and ketchup on the fries. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, this makes sense. Oh, I made that up. You... <laughs> <laughs> What's really relish on fries? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I would. I've Sounds seen good. Pulp Fiction. I know how this works. <laughs> yeah, good. check check out the uh, top level um, uh, top level of this directory, JJ. Top uh, level of this uh, one? The, 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 the repo home. Uh, it's Octa Swift. From mm -hmm. what little I know about Swift is the package .swift contains all the different libraries that are used. Yes. Ah. Yeah, this is the what the is called SPM or Swift Package Manager, and how we build everything. And uh, it's, it's not a real language until they have a poorly, poorly implemented version of CPAN. Totally, totally. Nice. I mean, that was good. That was with really this good. one though, you can provide like which versions you want, so uh, you know yeah. you got that going for you. I, I really <laughs> like the way that they did this with the it's just a repo name and the version, and it kind of takes care of the rest. On yeah. Numbers. And like here, I've got, you know, like up to the next minor version. And that's like a built in function that will just go and be like, hey, three, four, you know, one is cool, three, four, two is cool too. But after that, cool. Yeah. And now, you... how is, how do you find the argument parser? Because one of the things I've really loved about Go is the Cobra um, CLI tooling makes mm -hmm. like building any old CLI like dead simple. Yeah. So Swift. It's dead or simple. <laughs> uh it's 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 super super easy uh the 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 library itself is provided by apple um uh with you know maker of the language which is pretty easy their documentation is crazy straightforward but if you jump out and go to the sources repo and go to cli.swift 
uh, you'll you'll see what all is involved to make all of the arguments, and that's it. Wow. Um, oh yeah. So, nice. so like yeah. when it like that dot long, um, I, I I force you to write dash dash argument name. Right. And then hmm. if I want you to you know have a short one, there's a dot long and short. Um, there's a wow. uh, uh, yeah, and it's snake case. So like it, it scrolled down a little bit. Uh, where's one? There's a good one. <laughs> well, the capital letter and you know as as it goes into snake case, uh, we'll add a hyphen to your option, and yep. you. Kevin, so, you are the only person I know that when your internet connection freezes, you don't look stupid. Oh, uh, that's because <laughs> I generally look you're... stupid. <laughs> Every time you're frozen, you look like like a beautiful photo of a, of a person. Whereas like when I do it or JJ does it, it's always like, uh, uh. I'm having, I've been having terrible internet issues recently. Here's that short and long. Right yeah, there's a short and long. And like, you know, that's an array of strings. Um, so you can use it multiple times and then it will mm -hmm. create an array of strings. Nice. Cool. Anyway, it's it's crazy easy how um, I, I was able to get this up and running so quickly. Um, like here, like there's another one, um, you know, custom long, custom short, because I, I didn't want to, I had, a, I had an option that was already pre-parsed as dash C. Right. Um, so I was like, yeah, K. What about like, I remember in uh, Python's arc parse stuff, you can have like choices uh, where you're limited to the input. Yeah, you can yeah, do that. that. I don't have any of those here, uh, but yes, you can do that. You can do mutually exclusive options. Um, and, but like with arc parse, you can do, you know, sub commands. And I am doing that here. Oh, okay, uh, nice. So uh, actually all of those things that you scrolled through, are technically a subcommand. Oh. So like when you run the Octa as a, as a command line utility, it's, uh, it gives you two options, deploy and undeploy. But like as it's parsing your container file, if you have like a syntax error, I'm validating that syntax. And then I'm coming back and I'll come back to you and be like, hey, this is wrong. And then hmm. kick out an error message that says, hey, this is wrong and why. And you can run Octa from dash dash help and it will spit out of the potential options that you can use on your from command line hmm. so nice. from like a user experience point of view it's like hey this is a crazy simple application uh you've made a mistake here's some information on how to solve that and you know the the application expands very cool nice. So JJ, let's, uh, let's take this thing for a test drive. Yeah, I was going to say, we should start playing with it. We've talked quite a bit, quite a bit right? So let's, let's play with it. Um, yeah, this is where it all, you know, burns down. Right. <laughs> Hold on. So are, you gonna, are we going to figure out how to compile it, JJ? I, I think we should, because I've never actually compiled yeah. Swift before. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen here. So yep. Yep. see, you're on a Mac. Uh, so the, the the big thing that you have to do to make the app go is uh, brew install lib ssh2. Um, uh, lib ssh2 and open SSL. I don't have homebrew installed. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That we're sunk. JJ, uh, JJ uses uh, <laughs> chocolatey on his Mac. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to build the project, Kevin, did you use Carthage or Cocoa Pods or? Nope, I use the uh, uh, Swift Package Manager directly SPM. I just oh, okay. Swift build. All right. All right last All right. time, I Swift was a while ago, and there was a big debate between Carthage and Cocoa Pods. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> but I guess that's for more. Uh, advanced examples or something. Yeah, potentially. Like, even I, I included the Xcode project, but Xcode itself, if you load all of this up into Xcode, uh, note it, or finds it as a um, Swift or as a, um, what do they call it? A Swift pack. It's Swift package, uh, CLI Swift package. I forget what they actually call the name of it, but uh, it is, uh, 
it, it doesn't recognize sure. it as a, a normal Xcode app that you know lets you uh -huh. sign everything and. I've never I've never actually started Xcode before on purpose. It's mm -hmm. started for me a couple of times, and I'm like, what the hell is this thing? Close. Yeah. Um, so should I should I start that here or? Yeah. You, I, don't think you need to. Yeah, I don't think you need to. No. Okay. All right. So I'm now in the in here. What are you yep. next? Uh, Swift build. If you and scroll down and read me, it says what to do. You wrote docs? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tell you what, nobody writes docs better than an OpenStack admin. Or that's an true. Open stack admin. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's very true. <laughs> yeah, we like to write. Do you need all the options? You yeah, don't do technically need, need any of that. If you just run build, it'll give you a debug build. Error. Right, row. Oh, so you are going to need to run. You looks like you don't have a lot of the Xcode tools. OK. Um, what does that mean? Ruinstall install I mean, Xcode? Yeah. Oh, that takes a long time. Yeah. Um, if we could build this on Linux right quick. You want me to try? Yeah, here. How about you? How about you share your screen, Martinelli? Hold on. Let me clean things up here. Uh, would, would, the, would the next thing be for me, brew and install Xcode? Because I can run that in the background. Because I actually do want to do this myself. Is that the right next step? step? Um, uh, XED period in your in the in the Git repo, it'll queue up Xcode in the back or uh, in your foreground there, uh, and it should go through the normal install process. Sorry, that was Xcode. Uh, just no. XED space period. Running the brew install stuff. I think I have those libraries already, but just making sure. It requires Xcode with active development. What the fuck does that mean? Copy. So, yeah, like the inclusion of uh, libssh2 and uh, OpenSSL is because I'm relying on a a, a library called Shout, uh, which is, allows me to SSH and hit targets. I'm trying to figure out if I actually need that library. I, I might not. Um, and so in the very near future, I might kick out a revision without it. Hmm. All right. I think we're all trying to build it right now. I just had to run snap install Swift Lang. So uh, keep me in your thoughts and prayers. Did it didn't stop. Damn it! No one's laughing at my jokes. Oh, God. We're, we're all Damn focused it. on trying to get this uh, our respective uh, environments up running. JJ. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like uh, on CentOS eight, if you if you uh, run with CentOS eight, you can Apple install, DNF install, Swift Lang, pull the source, build it. My homebrew install is going crazy. Apparently you should share your screen, Marnelli. We can't see it. Is, and that's nothing to really see. It's just hanging. It's not really doing much. I think it's updating all the stuff um, that I've installed with homebrew. So it's updating Ruby right now for some reason. <laughs> God. <laughs> so. PC um, Logan. <laughs> it's going to wait till it actually updates. Uh, till it actually says something. So I know I actually have Xcode installed and all those other Xcode related artifacts installed. So Brew is brewing. Yeah, Brew is brewing. Now it's telling me to do software updates. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Xcode kind of needs that. Yeah. It's it's a big honking thing. It's like three gigs. children have stopped knocking on my door. Oh, that's good. Yeah. My, my dogs are cruising. Oh, they're sleeping. Come 
free, free disk space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> To try running Swift build as homebrew brews. Oh, oh, it's doing stuff final. Great success. Uh, <laughs> no, <not. laughs> turns out I didn't have uh, lib SSH installed, so uh, yes, it's trying to do Swift build and install at the same time. Let me actually control C that, it's fine. I think I can share now, we'll see. Hopefully it works. PC load letter. Gonna get someone to laugh at that eventually. <laughs> Are you gonna there stop? You go. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, apparently I hadn't run homebrew in a while, so it just decided to just update everything. Ah. This should be finished up soon. There's a lot of stuff. How's it going for you, Paul? Um, the snap for Swift doesn't seem to work, so I figured I might just try. Say it ain't so. The Docker file, but then I noticed you don't have a multi-stage Docker file, so of course I immediately started writing one of those because <laughs> I have no ability to actually do what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh wow! Yeah, you're right. This is just one big Docker file. Yep, pretty simple. I'm getting burned by Ruby here. <laughs> it's always Ruby. That was always uh, DNS. That is. Yeah. Ruby and DNS. <laughs> hey, come on. No whammies. JJ has learned how impatient I am. Mm -hmm. But what is our life than, than just watching uh, the progress bar going across the screen or green dots? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing like everything under the sun still. Okay. You have to update Mac OS now. <laughs> yeah, are you running on Catalina? Uh, yeah. Double check. <laughs> Homebrew. What does unbound sound familiar? Is that a is that a local DNS thing? No. That's yeah, it. yeah, it's DNS unbound, the unbound server. Okay. Okay, cool. I'll share my screen when that's done. <laughs> Paul, you want to share yours? Maybe you're doing something a little bit more interesting right now. Uh, I'm literally sure. watching a little circle move. <laughs> uh, where's my Zoom gone? Share screen. Welcome to the IBM Developer Twitch channel, uh, Twitch <laughs> stream, where we're just sharing random screens. Yes. <laughs> 
All right. You see me? Yep. All right. So I was in the middle of doing this. Ooh. So you can see I added a as build here on the build. And then I'm doing a regular from CentOS. I assume that tag is right. And just copying that one file in. And that way we won't get all of Swift with it. Yeah, neat. So we'll see if this works. Is, is it supposed to, are you supposed to type Podman? Podman, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, spelled, po Podman. You spelled Podman wrong. Yeah. All right, hang, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> Wait, what? Computer. What? What did I like? Huh. What do you mean? Oh, T? What? Tag? It's dash dash to dash dash tag to you, isn't it? No, it's just no, like Docker build. This is, this is not. What the hell? Your alias screwed up. Docker build. Yeah, it's just. It, it... Me being funny probably was the problem. Oh, you didn't spell yeah. build right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I did it, JJ. Oh, boo. <laughs> boo. <laughs> All right, let's see how we go. All right, so we got about half a gig worth of uh, Docker file for Swift. Yeah, yeah, it's big. Yeah, the. Uh... I um, Swift itself publishes official images, and I'm just pulling from that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I can get it to be smaller in the Docker file, but I yeah. haven't tried yet. There's no like slim uh, option or something. There is a uh, yeah. There's like I think it's slim or light or something of that nature. But yeah, I assume the CentOS image is pretty slim to start with, though, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The base Great image. CentOS. Yeah. 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 Isn't the um, all right? So now we're doing official D. What is it called? D or C D F? No. DNF. Like this? No, no. The very small container that um, uh, open UBI. Uses. UB. Yeah. yeah. Would that UBI. be better? Would that be better in this case? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I would it be better? I don't. I don't know if it'd be better, but it's definitely mm -hmm. smaller. I mean, it gets the binary. So we're, just doing runs the build. we're doing the build now. We're building. So that's yeah. a good start. We're building. Yeah, building like a boss. It's got to get How all the library. Going, JJ? Uh, I am almost to, to almost downloaded Xcode. Wow. <laughs> what an exciting stream this one is. Yeah, it really no is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh, an error? No. Just a warning. We, we, we're, we're DevOps, as we ignore warnings. Yeah, yeah. True. It's true. Deprecation just means I don't have to pay attention to it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's actually like carrying a pager for like 10 years teaches you anything that's not marked critical, you can just ignore. Yeah, yep. not 911. Like, obviously, it's not my problem. Yep. Okay. <laughs> when your boss is telling you to go start fixing those warnings, you know you don't, your boss doesn't know what you do. <laughs> your high peak CPU usage is affecting the quality of this meeting. What the hell? Uh oh. Right, right. I should have turned my GPU on. You need more home. TVs for the DBs. Oh my God, look at this. Woo. Thanks, Chrome. Jeez. <laughs> I was gonna say it's 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 Swift compiling, but no, uh, that would be wrong. I don't want to close a few tabs there, Paul. 
Hit F5. There we go. <laughs> like, I just restored like 150% of my CPU by killing Chrome that I wasn't even using. Hmm. Now it's all Zoom's problem. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you, if you had Slack installed, your computer would have just blown up just now. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Actually, let me stop Slack. <laughs> that might also help. <laughs> um, you kill it there. Quit. Yeah. So what, I guess while we're waiting, something cool I did uh, last week was... I, I got a GP an external GPU. Oh, nice! Um, so coming get? out of my laptop via Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. um, and so I got the enclosure, which is a Sonnet something or other, and I stuck a I think it's a GeForce 1050 in it, uh, and it just like plugged in and worked. And so I was mm -hmm. able to install the NVIDIA headless driver on Ubuntu, and so I can get GPU acceleration on video encoding and stuff now by clipping it on, which is cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, because my CPU is getting a little long in the tooth and is really slow these days. Uh, built, OK. So Docker run Okta. Ooh. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, so you need actual Swift in the container to run this? You must this? need some. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the build container wasn't going to work. Unless you want to just bring in the world. Well, I'll just go back to the original Docker right here. Yeah. Womp, womp. Oh, actually, I can leave those in. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh no, it's going to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. The trash your build container. Yeah. Who who wrote this Docker file? <sighs> the worst. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. This stuff. Now what did I do? This copy should be down here. Oh my God, I can't copy and paste. Anyway, that copy should be after these runs. Because if it was, those runs would be cached. I'll, I'll, I'll make a pull request and give you a better Docker file. That will be my gift to you. I appreciate it. Um, in the meantime, <laughs> I guess I just have to let it rebuild. Uh, Docker image. Are they in order? My uh, my oh, homebrew stopped. my homebrew update finally stopped, and uh, I'm running Swift build now. Ooh. Let's see how long that takes. Oh. Uh, is it just oh? Oh, I didn't have OpenSSL install. It's it's not uh, brew install OpenSSL. It's something else. It's brew install lib R E S S L. Uh, uh, I'm failing. Brew install the uh, lib SSH2. You had that one? Yeah, but um, can I share for a second, Paul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I, home. Homebrew finished updating, and uh, it said uh, I didn't have uh, SSL installed. So it's actually brew install lib re SSL. Oh, 
you had told JJ it was uh, open SSL. Anyway, so I just finished that. Ah. Yeah. And now it works? Mm, we'll see. I'm getting a warning there. Two warnings. Do you need to export those? We'll see. Yeah. Package configs, maybe. You assume I know what I, you assume I know what I'm doing. Come on. <laughs> what are those counters on the side. You know. Um, steps maybe. How many steps left in the process? Yeah. I I, I don't know. Moment of truth. Wow. Fail. We'll get there. That's the whole point of this. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be interesting to figure out because uh, on the GitHub Actions, they have a, a Mac OS latest VM that you can run your tests in. And I was having a very similar problem in those actions that I haven't mm. uh, quite figured out. It works on my Mac test node here at my house. So I just don't know what the delta is between Did, did the you VM just it your... works on my machine, us? Yeah, I did. I think you did. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Oh, yeah. So we'll just ship your machine, right? That's the whole point of containers. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we, we can P to V your laptop. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> just tarball up the OS and ship it off. <laughs> Can't believe I used to do that. Works in so dev. Dumb. Yeah, so dumb. <laughs> How did you like uh, GitHub Actions? Oh, there was it was crazy easy. How I mean, like it's it's all so well integrated. <laughs> like uh, I was I was sitting there thinking I'm gonna go ahead and spin up a you know create a Circle CI account and link the two and you know send over whatever jobs I needed and and go that route and then I was like, well, I'll just try this whole Actions thing. It yeah. worked. We actually had a, um, I think Paul was involved in that too, but JJ and I uh, put some effort into creating a, an action for deploying to the IBM Cloud Kubernetes service. Um, we actually had that uh, published. So when you go to like uh, create a new action somewhere, um, you can see the IBM Cloud tile. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. And, yeah, we did that. Yeah. Mm yeah, -hmm. uh, us. And and the OpenShift one is almost submitted too, or almost merged also. Yeah. So cool. Nice. Well, I'll show you what that one looks like. And the good thing like. about JJ doing it is he's a kind, thoughtful gentleman and has probably added me to the commit message as a co contributor. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Every, every, people need to, yeah, they, they need, I, I have no problem with adding co uh, authored by because I know for a fact in the work that we do, in open source, like the only the only way you can show that you're actually producing is through commit commit messages. So, I I have no problem with doing that. Hey, welcome to Xcode! Yay! <laughs> yeah. So if you click on the uh, new workflows, there it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Boom, right there. Yeah, like in adding a workflow, it, it's so easy. I mean, like uh, it, on that page, you you know 
click the little button, it opens up a little text editor. You're like, yeah, yeah. It gives you a nice little template that you can yeah. fill in the form, basically. Yeah, uh, it's it worked pretty well. I remember there's one for there's a whole bunch of like linters one. Do you check out that like super linter? No, I haven't. No, uh, GitHub published a super linter or mega linter. I forget what they called it. it was sort of Power Rangers name. Huh. Yeah, it was uh, basically it's like all the linting libraries from all the different uh, languages all in one action. So you just kind of. Yeah, you you're like, one. deal with this, please. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the way that you wrote them, and they looked pretty slick. Yeah, they're they're pretty pretty easy. So is this one here is when you release on yep. type on release type create. Um, you're just basically pushing to a Docker uh, hub. Yeah, so the the action itself will go and build a container, push to Docker hub, yeah. um, and then. It will spins up a second job, which actually builds everything on uh, Ubuntu, and then uh, pulls back the the pre-configured binary and stores it in in the uh, in the release. Oh, so here it's actually in the GitHub release. Yeah, yeah. So if you go back to my one major release, uh, you'll see it has a couple artifacts in it and. Uh, releases on the right hand side. Oh, they moved it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in a better location now. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is it. So there's the release. And the Mac OS one, I, I had to push myself, but the Linux one is part of the automation. I haven't worked out the how to make the Mac. Yeah, see, he didn't freeze in a stupid face again. Yeah. Oh. So lucky man. <laughs> Which is nice. So yeah, you can see the this is how you build the Linux one here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Linux yeah, and then, then that that's done on uh on Ubuntu. Yeah, and yeah, you do that it's the same steps in your README here, uh Swift build, and you just upload it using the upload action. Yep. There you go. Upload and release asset. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty pretty easy. And these are only on pull requests and PRs. And you're basically just doing linting and you try to build it. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, so if uh, any files change under the Swift sources um, or the project mm -hmm. package on a PR, it'll go in and build a container and then run the tests and then build it on Linux directly and run the tests. And hopefully, you know, once I can figure out, you know, my, all of my poor life choices, I can make the Mac OS one uh, work too. Still running. So I think mine may have completed. Hang on. Is the push one. The push oh. one, so like, uh, yeah, when, if I merge a pull request, it will go off and build a new container and then push that up to Docker. Up. Or, or if I push directly, uh, the action will kick off too. Is there a reason why you did that and you didn't just go to the Docker Hub uh, settings and kind of link up your account there? No. <laughs> hey, can I take over the uh, screen share real quick? Sure, sure, sure. Hold on. Let me stop here. So I just got this to happen. Um, that's the the same uh, error that Steve had. Oh, that is the same error. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I not only. There's oh. um. So in the in the in the brew install stuff, they had a bunch of exports that they like. Hey, if you need access to this library, use this. Um, I might want to try exporting those on on your system to see if that helps resolve your the issues here. 
those are long gone. <laughs> um, okay. Should I just reinstall it to get those echoes back? Oh, yeah, sure. That's probably an easy way of going about it. I'm a DevOp. I just reinstall yeah. things if they don't work for me. Uh, what is it? Uh, brew unlink uh, lib SSH2 and then brew link SSH2, and that will regenerate all the crazy sim links. Brew, uh, brew unlink lib SSL2. And then link. Uh, while he's running that, on my end, I found a argument you could pass to Swift build to include the like the shared libraries into the build, and so I should be able to get rid of that error I saw. Ah, oh, neat. Yep, same problem. All right, let's Here. try the, the exports. The exports? I didn't see uh, any. Yeah, I don't see them either. But uh, I'll I'll I'll. Uh, Copy and paste them into the chat for you. All right. Maybe this might be good for your README, just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Which uh, chat are you throwing in? Uh, I guess the Zoom chat, yeah? Sure. We only have like six chats between us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's how you do it right. Yeah, well, I mean, I can spin up a Jitsi instance real quick and we can get on Jitsi on Zoom sharing through an Etherpad if you want. I mean, so long as we can use, you know, it through Discord as well, I think it's okay. <sighs> So, well, we'll so, tunnel it so, through Discord for the end-to-end -end encryption. Yeah, of course. <laughs> nice. Uh, here. We'll try this. Yeah? Yep. Uh, yeah, that, you'll have to yeah. fix rate that. <laughs> Good guy. All right. All right, so Things are happening. Success. Uh, so there's a dot build directory that gets created. And then inside that, there's a debug link. And then there is Octi. And you should be able to run it. There we go. Great success. High fives Yay. all around. Yay. <laughs> And I guess I should add. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, well done. <laughs> so yeah, I should add that to the README because um, it, it would turn out that I'm a bad person there. Uh, mm. But uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what do we do? What is the first thing we do with this? To, to show something me. off. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, so uh, run, uh, you know, you can run the various help, do the various sub commands, and just to, you can see uh, deploy dash dash help. And then like one of the hidden options, you know, like it would, if you have a parser problem that we were talking about before was um, from, so run, uh, run uh, instead of deploy, put from. Uh, maybe it's capital, or oh, oh, I forget what the, uh, the action is. One second. Mm -hmm. I'm like telling you to do something and it doesn't work. JJ, we should have got the author for this app on here. I know, it totally. It so I know. Much easier. Jeez, yeah. really Anyways, should've. go on with it. Uh, so the, do we have a target you want to deploy something to? Um, well, I have the... Um, like a virtual machine, we can SSH, you know, and run something uh, into, or I have a demo app you can kind of follow. Um, okay, um, yeah, so give me two seconds. Um, so what I can do is... Well, you can hmm. run it on local host too, um, and that, that is fine. Yeah. Um, I, I spent up two machines on the on IBM Cloud for us to do this against, okay. but unfortunately they're in VPCs, so I can't actually get directly to them unless I give it a public IP. So I can do that. Hang on. Um, Is there like a Bastion host that uh, no, you can bounce I'm, through? I'm, I'm too lazy, unfortunately. Uh, um, that's one of the neat features that I kind of baked into. Octa is you be able to you're able to bounce through multiple hosts. Oh, cool! So oh, can, you, oh no, you I can't do that. Your, uh, SSH yeah. config, or do you? Uh, it generates it kind of on the fly, but yeah. Nice. Okay, so this is my Bastion host right here. Um, no one can see on the stream, which is nice. Okay. Um, so I can I, I can go through this guy and get to that guy. Yeah, so long okay. as the you know you've got a key that goes from one to the other. Yep. Yeah. Yep, I do. OK. So bring this back up. Yeah, the top secret uh, <laughs> slash that you have showing up is uh, pretty awesome. That's legit. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So how do I how do I do the Bastion post that you're talking about? So uh, you're going to create a, a, a file. Uh, it can It's arbitrarily named. So uh, I just call them t uh, target files, but it can be container file, whatever you want to call them. It was called target. Yeah. Sure. Um, okay. And then you'll do capital two. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Yep. And then uh, uh, dash dash via. Uh, you might want to bring the the thing back because uh, you'll you're going to put in the, your username at, your username at IP address. Mm -hmm. uh, Hang on. And then port. This one. Yeah. And port, then uh, port okay. colon, uh, yeah, is there a colon there? I don't know. Colon, yep. And then space, username, at IP address, port. Uh, yeah, no no at. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm sorry. I, when I was saying at, I meant the at symbol. Mm -hmm. Username. Like that? Yep. And then colon port. OK. That's that's it. Next line. OK. And then uh, run echo hi, or whatever you want to run. OK. Sure. You don't need the quotes. It'll, okay. it'll encode it, but yeah. Right. Well, luckily, these are keyed so I can show this. That's not a big deal. Okay. Um, so go back to live. So if it, um, for everyone who hasn't seen, uh, we are going to go to a machine through a bastion node, then to another machine that we just created that has nothing on it. And we're going to run echo hi. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. With a bit so of luck, it'll, you know, 
the the live demo gods will uh, smile upon us and everything will work. So yeah, octet target done. Go. Fail. Whoa. What is, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, okay. Missing argument. Missing argument. Don't. Don't. Indeed. <laughs> what is the username at? Uh, go back to the the file. Let me double check that that's the correct thing for me to log in as too. Um, I'm pretty sure that's right. Hey guys, I gotta run. I gotta go talk to uh, Spencer. Okay. Right. Kevin, it's been, been, it's been, it's been real. Thanks yeah. for coming by. No problem. I'll catch up the rest of this uh, on the actual stream. Yeah, yeah. See you guys. Later. Bye. Uh... Oh, uh, put in de put in deploy. No, the no um, in the command line. Oh. Like that? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to give you the same output because the, the default is deploy. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's reading the step. Missing argument. Hmm. I don't know. Let's put a uh, public IP on that <laughs> server. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, do it right. live. Okay, give me a second. It's attempting to SSH into the other node, which I mean looks looks right, but. Uh, Hang on. I'm going to go recreate what you did. Okay. So then just change. I uh, get rid of the via and put in yep. the uh, appropriate IP. Yeah. Uh, there's a comment at the beginning of the line. Oh, thank you. All right, so then bring this back. And then we do. I just got found nil when unwrapping an optional value. I mean, are we on the. This is a fresh clone of everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And just to verify, you go ahead and try to SSH into that. Yep, yep. And this guy, I mean. Okay. SSH. Yep, there we go. It works. Um, works in data. Ops yeah, problem did, now. Yeah, right. Yeah. It did ask for my fingerprint, so maybe that could have been something. No. No. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead. I mean, you're calling. Man. What do you want to do? Yeah. Uh, can you do a? We do a. Check out uh, the the tag zero zero one, and let's rebuild it. Pitch tags stash a. Um, tag. Uh, tag. Yeah. yeah. Zero, zero, 001. Yep. And then uh, just Swift build.
will re will overwrite the build in the build directory? Yes. Okay. It should be pretty quick. Yeah. Well, so you impressed. should be able to rerun it now. Is there a version number on here that we can see? No. Kevin. Yep. Kevin. Bad person. Come on. I need to. Yeah. I should <laughs> add that. Uh, my thing. Deploy. Target. Same problem. Same error. Yep. So what the problem is. Well, I guess we can debug that. OK. Let's see. I have a similar local lab at home. I can try to reproduce that as well. Because that's a pretty basic install. And I, uh, mm -hmm. I can show, uh, I guess I can share my screen. Uh, sure. I think I'm the only one that hasn't shared a screen. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, we can go from there. Hold on. It's all good. I mean, that, uh, as I promised you, it would be basically to, uh, a UX experience of trying to use your, your new project. And yeah. hopefully we've highlighted some, some sharp edges that we could make this better for you. Yeah, oh. absolutely. Yeah. Let's see here. Hopefully this doesn't you know, uh, crash and die. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, working? Yeah. Yep. Release. So I've got, uh, I'm running the, the head of master. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of set up a little, uh, uh, let's see here. You might want to make the text significantly bigger. Significantly bigger. Yeah. Yes. Looking for the stream preview, it's real small. OK. One moment, please. All right. That should be better, yeah? Yep. Yeah, much better. So here's the uh, demo. So here's my two, right? It's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's I, basically what I told you to put. Uh, minus I, I included some escalate stuff so that I could escalate to sudo, uh, mm -hmm. or I could sudo and, and keep my environment as I as I escalate my privileges. And I've got four hosts. So I'm going to, you know, uh, and actually, I should probably show that too. Uh, so my little default app is, mm -hmm. is pretty simple. Uh, install Python, copy a template, you know, a uh, index file, expose a port, change the work mm -hmm. directory, and then uh, create an entry point, uh, cool. which is on my target node. Uh, and here is my index file. So pretty pretty basic stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not, not a... Uh, so this is it running. Uh, again, this is a, you know, a whole, it worked on my system. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, which is a terrible state of affairs. So, so just to make sure that I understand this correctly, <clears throat> we we're, we're shoving that container file and then installing Python three on one of those remote machines, yep. copying the index.html that's related to that container file, yep. exposing the port and then starting up Python on that machine. Roger. Yep. So, so uh, if I cat out my two file, and go to one of these IPs. 
I have my nice. web server. And then I like, you know, if I don't want this app running anymore, I can reverse that. Um, can, can you deploy it one more time and then SSH into that machine for me and show me what is actually running that? That, it... uh, that I can do. Uh, and uh, actually, before I do that, I will, I will run it one more time. Uh, yep. And I will this time add debug because then you can see all the things that it's doing nice. in real time. Nice. So it's doing it on all four machines simultaneously as I, mm -hmm. as, as I, you know, spray this config out. Um, and then I'll, I'll pick a different server, you know, th than the one I curled. Mm -hmm. So I'm root. My file was copied to opt. Mm -hmm. My IP tables was created as an octi rule 0.7,000. Nice. And my service file, system the system, is the uh, tag octi, the application, the SHA-1 of the entry point that was created, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, it's a pretty basic, oh, did I just ruin that? Yeah, I did. That's mm -hmm. a good time. Uh, hold on. Happens to the best of us. Happens yeah. to the best of us. That's what happened. You know. That's OK. I can, we can see that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Let's see, system D, system. There's my Octi service again, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, there's my service running, Python 3, 4, 7,000. Interesting. That's crazy. So it, I mean, it's it's pretty. Uh, what's cool about this little systemd service file, uh, which I can, I think my. You made well, it angry. Yeah, I did. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, what's cool about this little systemd? All right, is that uh, I mean, it's it's a pretty small unit, but it creates mm -hmm. its own little octi slice. It adds, you know, memory accounting and task accounting, all the little system D niceties. Uh, it does run it in a private temp. Um, we can add, you know, private users and private networks and all the other jazz. Yeah. I haven't done any of that stuff because I'm, you know, overtly lazy, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm getting there. But uh, the one of the neat things is that uh, the application did like, a, you know, a, it, it, well, I'm calling it a probe of the system and mm -hmm. said, What's my target platform? What's my system D version? What's my target arch? What's my target system? Which uh, is what what Docker would do, right? As you, you have mm -hmm. a build system, and so I add a target to that. And so any environment variable that you add, like if I add in my Docker file, my container file, env mm -hmm. equals etc., uh, it will become part of the environment for this entry point that gets created. Mm. That's pretty brilliant, man. Like, so, can you show the container file again for it? Sure. Uh, container file. So that's that. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, and then here I go, uh, undeploy. We'll do that again. And then I'll cat out. Nope. Oh, it says successfully deployed to four targets. Uh, yeah, yeah. It <laughs> should say successfully undeployed, but uh, yeah, that's uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll credit that to uh, two weeks of too much coffee. Uh, <laughs> nice. But nice. yeah, here I am again on a different host, right? The first one I did was I curled ninety nine, I SSH to two fifty two. Now I'm in one hundred seven. System D system. There's no 
octi unit mm -hmm. file. So nice. it cleans up after itself and IP tables save. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, well, I should do that with more sudo. Uh, yeah, there's that. So the, like, like I said, it just, it, the service isn't running anymore, but if I were to go and redeploy it, it would be back online in a quick minute. Nice. Nice. So the, like the whole, the whole point, you know, besides, you know, having the, the joys of compiling the app is, uh, um, being able to rapidly deploy to targets. Mm -hmm. Whether that be a VM or a bare metal server or a, a container or a serial device, like I said, mm -hmm. and then you know uh, well, the way I see people using this thing of me is uh, you know they're like all of the core logic for their applications is already in container files that are similar to this, mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. they can build all the things that they need in containers, test all that out, and then schlep it out into you know. AWS, IBM Cloud, Google Cloud, mm -hmm. Backspace, you know, wherever you want to uh, <laughs> put your workloads, they, uh, yeah, you can you can push it out universally across all of the different cloud providers, um, basically at the same time. Yeah. Now, is uh, is there an assumption that you'll have just one of these per server, or if I wanted to run like three or four apps, could I run? You could run three or four apps. Three or four of these. And so it uses the, some sort of ID or something to figure out the. It uses um, the SHA one of the entry the point. D. So the the, the oh, entry nice. point is the string Python three M HTTP server seven thousand. So that'll be unique every right. time. If I change that to seven thousand right. one, the app is now different. Mm -hmm. There's I have some desire to make it so that you know you can pass in some args, extra args, and uh, uh, making it so that you can, you know, customize that if you didn't want to take the system defaults, but uh, I haven't done any of that stuff yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's it functioning in a nutshell. <laughs> if we can get oh. it functioning on your system, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, one, one more thing, can you, can you create that same target file that we created on mine? Uh, just against one of yours so we can see that echo. I'm, I'm curious to see that. See if you re recreate sure. that. File. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here, we'll create a, a new file. Uh, well, I better remember what my IP is because I don't. So uh, yeah, to that 22. Yep. Run, run, echo high. Echo high. Yep. And I will get rid of all that stuff. And I called it new. Mm -hmm. oh, and nice. we can debug it and see that it's using the SSH driver and there it is right backing there. off of all the stuff. And then like the whole via process that we tried well, um, to do. So, so why, why is it step zero of zero? Is because the run not considered a step? No, the run is a step. Just numbers start at zero. Ah, uh, got it. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I so, it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's the only reason. OK. <laughs> I'm sure that's a, a flame war waiting to happen. Like, <laughs> you know, like when you get in an elevator in, you know, in, in Europe, you're on floor zero. Yep. Of yep. of n, here it's floor <laughs> one of n. Yep. You're like, well, where's zero? Anyway. <laughs> it's a, it's below you. No, that's yeah. negative one. That's negative what? one I'm on the <laughs> negative floor. Anyway, uh, so yeah, via I'm gonna go to that host via this other host. Mm -hmm. Um. And that looks like it failed spectacularly. So that's a bug. Mm -hmm. Yep, that same missing <laughs> argument. There it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure what that's all about. OK. Now, do you support the SSH config file? So if I had set up bumping through a jump post and stuff in an SSH config file, it would follow through that? No. 
it does uh, it does not follow the ssh config file the uh the library i'm using is lib ssh2 and i'm using it directly um maybe uh if i yeah uh, if i change it over or get rid of the dependency there which sounds like i probably mm -hmm. should because it sounds like it's creating a, a build problems mm -hmm. uh, but uh um yes if i get rid of that dependency then yeah i probably could but uh no i don't i don't respect the ssh config file at all cool so yeah Questions, comments, criticism? Solid little project, sir. Yeah, um, that's, yeah, that's I, that. I like it. Yeah. Do you have any yeah. thoughts around like post install configuration? Like setting, like if they're running an app that needs to connect to a database, setting the password. Oh, yeah. Or like, are you, are you like, you like you know what if you need to do that you should reach out to like uh, personally I think like you, sh you should have yeah. a vault and go and talk right. to the password but uh, I'm open to uh, you know trying to figure some of those things out yeah yeah I guess doing that at least in this app would then further go away from the, the Docker like, yeah I kept kind of file experience. So it probably makes sense that if someone wanted to do that, it should actually be like a second app itself that would run after this runs or you'd pipe one through the other or something like that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I tried my best to stay to the Docker file spec, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, copying files, like it, you can pass in dash dash chown, just like a copy file would allow you to do on a Docker file and it will change the user, assuming the user is there work directory will create the directory if it doesn't exist before it cds into it stuff like that which is all part of the the the, the default instruction set so i haven't right i haven't uh gone too far off the beaten path there i did create a couple yeah. new instructions that are um the the two right obviously you know, that's mm -hmm. that's new um, and then i have another one called interface because we are dealing with virtual machines, bare metal, et cetera. And if I wanted to, my IP tables rules to be on all interfaces, uh, that, that's fine. That's what Expose does. But uh, uh, um, the interface argument will lock it down to a particular interface. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's really the, that's, those are the only two extra instructions that I've. Uh, I've, uh, I've kind of done, but uh, for uh, but other than that, it, it it pretty much implements all of the other ones. So from a, um, just a from my end of things, I've discovered that Swift five doesn't support static compiling on Linux. I read that somewhere. Yeah. So, so you still need the core looks like the libraries. You still need the core. So I'm just switching to use Slim in the run and see if that saves us some space. Yeah, cool. Good. That's awesome. That would be a, that would be great to because yeah, the, I mean the, the Docker container that I'm pushing up there is like 750 meg or something like right. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean it's it's cloud, so it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah, it's expandable. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Storage is free. What are you yeah, talking about? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just want to make sure it was like I just had a phone call come in and my phone, my, my headphones went crazy. Ah. Y'all didn't have a bunch of music so started playing all of a sudden, did you? Yeah. Uh, was that what that was? Yeah. <laughs> I've ruined it. I ruined it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah. So. Cool. Well, um, I think we got what we were hoping to get done during the stream done. Um, what else do you want to see? Uh, th we saw everything we wanted to see. And we hopefully we gave you good, well, what, some what good other, feedback. What other cool tricks have you got? Yeah. Like what in there, are you, the, you, when you did it, were you like, fuck yeah, that was awesome? 
<laughs> yeah, that, I mean, if you go back through my releases, um, I'll stop sharing. But uh, if you go back through my re my releases, like each one is a different GIF, uh, which in, you know encompasses my emotions of like it worked. Yeah. <laughs> um, <Nice. laughs> yeah. Awesome. But the uh, yeah, it's uh, what other little cool things are in there. The interface thing is is was neat. I mean, it, it's simple though. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, like my my design behind that is you know, well, like let's say I was a a, a large enterprising company that needed to deal with, specifically with a particular piece of network equipment uh, with. The tooling, I could, you know, set up a VNF in a in a container, and then I could push it to bare metal. Um, mm -hmm. And so the idea being that uh, you could, you know, you could keep it in a container. Containers are great, mm -hmm. but uh, if you don't want the, you know, the overhead of all of that, you could just push it straight to bare metal. Mm -hmm. It's clever. It's pretty clever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's clever yeah. if we could get it to build. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so somewhere I think it would be a really interesting use case is your like IoT IoT kind of thing, which is I guess why you're doing also serial makes a lot of sense. Where yeah. You don't you don't have a ton of requirements to run software. You don't have a lot of pre configuration to do. You got nothing. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I have a Raspberry Pi cluster behind me huh? that if I could redeploy different versions of K3s to it have run containers inside of it that would be pretty cool uh actually so uh i haven't huh. i haven't committed it yet i have a i uh uh the my demo thing actually here i'll reshare my screen because yeah. uh, now, now this that k3s is, is a competing linux distribution because <laughs> you saw that ranch uh that Susan yeah, yeah, right? yeah 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 that's good on them but, yeah. but i mean in general if you think about it right like that this is screaming for like deploying stuff to Raspberry Pis over and over again. But if you're doing some like some work in that space, this this is perfect for that. So, so like uh, I've got this uh well it's just probably too big now. <laughs> uh, yeah. well here I will edit the file instead. The um the VMs that I'm using the, mm -hmm. the to show you this demo are running on some hypervisors I have in another room. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, they're KVM VMs that I created with Octi. Oh. So uh, here is a complete make me a thing. Uh, and uh, this is a demo that are, uh, that I'm going to push up into a, a repo on the Peznots, uh, the, yeah, the Peznots org here in just a few minutes. But anyways, the, the, the idea being that here is a, uh, a, a more complete thing of me that would let you go off and uh, spin a VM. And That's then, clever. And then connect That's to it. Really, um, really so, uh, you know, far more complicated than, than uh, you know, the run, you know, run a, a mm -hmm. standalone Python HTTP server or Echo High. So here's mm -hmm. like a real world thing that is yep. deploying. So one one thing I thought would be interesting use case is like doing a, a packer driver. Yeah, so with Packer, you already know the like the source IP and host and keys and everything, and yeah. so you could just slap in a bunch of fairly simple container files, and then like Packer would go ahead and build your EC2 instances, your QCows, your whatever. Yeah, you just go nuts. Yeah, yeah. Or, or how about connect to ESXi and deploy a template for you? Well, and <laughs> yeah, the. Uh... <laughs> The the driver that we kept using was SSH in, in this case, but there is a local driver mm -hmm. which just executes executes it as you, um, and it translates all of the shell commands directly into Swift commands. So like making a directory is a native Swift call. So when it does that, it's uh, on a local machine. It it's crazy fast. Hmm. Nice. Obviously, you're 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 bound by how quick. Your system can run the commands, but mm -hmm. you won't be waiting on the the interpreter to to catch up. Nice, nice. Well, sir, I I I can't wait to see the video of you doing this more more advanced explanation or demo because that 
when you when I think it'll finally click with a lot of people seeing this when you can call out Octa to go spin up four VMs on a machine and then you can SSH directly into it and hey, this is how you created it and it just did it. And it's 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 parallel to do that too. If it's that's yeah. great. So um, I mean, I'll create a, a VM. Oh, sure. the, nu the number is five that I'm using here, which is the, the tag. It's creating VM target VM five. And because I had, you know, uh, I had four, but they were only target one and two. Um, this is happening on two hypervisors in parallel. Um, and cool. you get to see the, uh, <laughs> the slowness of my internal network because my images are on NFS. <laughs> uh, so we got that going for us. Yes, this is live. That is really cool. We're doing it live. All right, where's your Ooh. where's your sound effect for that one? Um, Excellent. <laughs> I accept that. <laughs> All right, so it's it's done, and you know, just to to prove that it it did a thing. Uh, Rush list. Uh, uh, wrong note. There's target five. And, Holy crap. And if I do, uh, if I do nothing, uh, if I do this, you can see the network address that it assigns. You won't be able to get to it from my hypervisor because I use Mac VLAN. But I mean, it's uh, I'm doing this what Octi would have done. Uh, mm -hmm. Minus all of the typos. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we got that going for us. But that's anyways, fun. there's the VM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome, man. No, like that. Seriously, that is really cool. There we go. Uh, now I can type. Um, and nice. there's you know there's there's nothing on this node. IP table, like nothing on this host. So it's a brand new virtual machine that I just spun up. Anyways, uh, uh, up time. So yeah, up one minute. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, like yeah. so that there's a demo demo app. I'm just pushing a repo that has the demo files in it that you know yeah. people can follow along at home. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the idea is that like make a virtual machine, deploy an application. It doesn't matter. It's it's like you can run ad hoc commands. If you want to spin mm -hmm. up something on in the ASXi hypervisor, cool. Mm -hmm. You, you want to do it on KVM? Cool. Cool. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's nice. fucking brilliant. <laughs> wow. And and you started this project just a couple of weeks ago just yeah. because it was, yeah. It was neat. Uh, I had an oh, itch. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so we have a request, uh, hang on, uh, from someone in the chat. Um, looks like they just joined us. Uh, I just sent them a link. Um, do you want to give the TLDR for Freeman 7? TLDR, it's a deployment application or an application deployment tool that can use local SSH or serial connections. And uh, it's written in Swift. And we have proved, or we have seen. Yeah, we've seen it work. Granted, we haven't proved that it works. <laughs> we, uh, we have we have a couple sharp edges. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's about two weeks old. So I'm sorry and thank you uh, for letting me uh, occupy your airwaves. Yeah, man, not a problem. Not a problem. Well, um, yeah, I I am very excited to see where this this is this is going to go and being that you're, you're obviously making, um, Oh, sorry. We have another question. Not operating system related. Nope. Just general no. open source. Yes. Yep. 
uh, OSS. So in what time frame are we something. expecting to see triple O replaced with uh this? <laughs> <Zing. Yeah, nah. laughs> nope. Uh <laughs> So, so we need an under under cloud. Yeah, first. The, the, the under ish cloud. No, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. We just did a whole bunch of container work in Triple O just recently, actually. Uh, but, uh, right. but, but no, I, I mean, I can't imagine Triple uh, O using this at, at least at this stage. <laughs> and it's also but you'll need to right? <laughs> put an IPMI driver into it first. Oh no! Yeah. To, Julia, to where are you? <laughs> Julia. <laughs> Does it run on Z machines? I mean, if you can SSH into it, it'll it'll run there. Yeah. Well, that, that's clearly um, an IBM are asking that question. Yeah. Well, in, in Linux on Z, um, yeah. is is we it's really easy to port things to it. So if you're running Linux on Z, there's no and to your point, SSH, there's no reason why this wouldn't work. Yeah, and system D yeah. is on Z if, or Linux on Z if I'm correctly, which is the proof uh, the proof in the pudding that you did uh, right there where it was just creating a new service file. I I, I wasn't uh, I when I, uh, I I started with system D um, mm -hmm. just because it's there, uh, but I'm not married to system D. I would actually like to be able to as I went off and did the probe, you know, I came pulled mm -hmm. back the system D version. I would like to uh, make it so that. I could detect different NIP systems, um, or, or you know, something specific like I don't know, just run this in, you know, supervisor D, please, uh, and it would, it would just go and do that. I haven't done any of that work yet, but it is a, uh, it's, it's all driver based, and the drivers are, you know, a subclass of the, uh, the, the primary or the final class, uh, which is a. Uh, um, uh, it's all in the operator directory there, but so I mean it's it's all it's 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 building on various class structures. So you know, adding a new system D driver or system N driver uh, would be trivial. So two questions. Yeah, yeah. Two, two two questions. First, um, so Paul was not trolling me when he said that we should create the virtual virtual uh, virtual box driver for this. So people could actually like run it on their local machine and see it work with VirtualBox. Thank you. So it seems like a it seems like a reasonable thing now because it proves that it works, right? Like you, yeah. obviously you have a bunch of hypervisors and machines, but if we wanted to show this off at like a conference or something, well, conference because we yeah. don't get to go to conferences anymore. Yeah. But <laughs> a, a Zoom conference. A Zoom conference, yes. Yeah. Uh, it would be it's that that developer experience of having VirtualBox already there and then yeah. just running like Octa deploy. Virtual box, whatever, um, and it just kicks into Virtual Box and does the thing. Mm -hmm. That 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 is that is what what's the what's the term? CZ mean time to dopamine. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, it's the mean time to dopamine that will get everyone to understand why this is so valuable. Yeah, I, um, I happen to agree. I think that'd be awesome. Let's do it. Um, and then my next question is and. I'm, I, this is this is genuine, and I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm, I'm placing my head space in this area. So so we were able to prove by using the that um, container file and run it as that um, uh, the Python app with systemd. Yeah. Now, if I had a bunch of containers, or if I had like that, if I wanted to have that container file become a container and run on that machine not as a system d is it possible that podman slash docker could be installed on there and then the container run inside that entity do you see what i'm saying here so i don't see why not don't see why not okay. well you can use your system data start docker images right yeah so you, you just kind of yeah. roll it that way yeah and, and podman's got a dash dash system d flag okay well you see what i'm saying like yeah. then then you have the containerization of that Python app, so you, you run it on on the bare on the bare metal, mm -hmm. right? With the system D, and then you have another example of running it as a container on the VM, if you will, inside the container runtime with Octa running that thing, right? Yeah, Does it, uh, uh, we could totally do that. I mean, like if you actually go into my GitHub Actions, that's how the tests run. Octa is running okay. inside of the container and then deploying things. Nice. So. Um, so Freeman Seven says he still doesn't understand why it's still valuable. Um, CZ, you want to answer that? 
as someone who's just picked this up, how do you, what do you see the value prop of this from what we've learned today? So my, my biggest value prop thought is around the very small thing, um, either very small VMs or IoT devices where you literally, literally just have one app to run and like being able to just have this very small, concise thing that would work locally on your laptop as you're developing it, but then also immediately work on, on that other thing, um, I think is a really interesting use case. Mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly lighter weight than uh, doing something like Ansible. It's certainly lighter weight than like creating tarballs and shipping them around or creating an mm -hmm. apt or a yum. Um, yeah, I think that's the main one for me. Um, and then I think... There could be interesting use cases. I mentioned Packer, but Packer or Vagrant getting really small uh, images built using Packer that would be ready for Amazon and then Vagrant locally. I think there's, a, I think there's a, definitely a lot of interesting power for just general like development perspective as well. Mm -hmm. um, it is kind of a, an edge thing. So I, I can't see it becoming mainstream but I can definitely see where folks that are doing container stuff and just want like, they just want it to, they just want it to work. Um, totally. Re I think reach for this. It'd be cool. If only I, I wanna, we could get the static, the binary statically compiled. Yeah. Um, I, I want to reiterate that, that um, edge conversation of the value prop here, because I genuinely see a, a, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, a factory of a bunch of sensors and the quintessential Raspberry Pi or whatever that are all over your, your yeah, Arduino. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. And where that it has SSH on there and it, all it does is run one container of your application to do that thing. And then you can deploy to all of those machines with that one container file that you worked locally to make changes to do other thing. It sends it it shotguns it out to all your things and everything is updated and you don't have to think about it. That this That is super, super valuable in very specific use cases. And yes, there are some projects, projects out there that already do these types of things, don't get me wrong, but this one really has stripped it down to what is exactly needed right then and there. And that that's what I see, that's what I see. I did a very similar thing. Like we start as we started, I I did that to my connected home security devices, which are these mm -hmm. little ESP devices. I reprogrammed them all with the latest firmware, and I have four of them. And so I have a little four-port USB hub, plugged it in, ran it, it programmed them all. I unplugged them, and I was done. Uh, yep. My process before was you know connect each one one at a time, run a little Python tool, ship the new firmware, unplug it, do it again. And now I just ran it on all four. Anyway, that it was it was neat. Uh, uh, that, that's one you know very uh, very cool use case. Uh, we got a follow up here. Um, I have not seen much with multi tenancy on the edge yet. Can this software help with that? I mean, it's because it just runs as a user. Yeah. Right. It's right. It's uh, and it's indifferent to multi-tenancy. Uh, <laughs> if your environment is a multi-tenant environment, I'll gladly respect that. And, and you can you have permission upgrade or permission escalation permission too. escalation as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, and uh, if you yes. just as you um, uh, in the Docker uh, Docker file spec, right? You you can set the user, and if you do that, uh, it will escalate and then change to user whatever you have set it to. Um, so, nice. yes. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. So, uh, I, I'm serious about the Vagrant thing, uh, or not Vagrant, VirtualBox. Um, uh, Vagrant. 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 Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, what would be the first thing we should look at if we want to do some investigation on how hard it would be for us to make, write that driver? Oh, can I answer this? And we'll see if yeah. I get it right. So with Vagrant, you have you, you you kind of have a contract with talking to specific IP addresses and ports. So you just need to like, I assume Vagrant plugins are written in Ruby, um, mm -hmm. but I haven't written one. 
Um, so you would just need to fill in the Ruby bit that collects the IP, the IP address, which is localhost and then the right port and true, then true. constructs the, um, constructs a CLA command to add that to the two and then run it against the file, the, the container file or container files. Hmm. Yeah. So it's, I, I would think you'd, you, you could probably pull it off in a couple of hours, uh, even with having to figure out the structure of putting together the plugin, the, um, uh, the provider or provisioner, is it provisioner? I think it's provisioner, right? I haven't made a vagrant I mean, it's thing been, of me in for, you know, basically ever. Uh, like, yeah, I'm the same uh, way. I haven't touched the vagrant. La the last one I time. did was a, a vagrant libvert box. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't, haven't done that. And that was probably yeah. eight years, five, six years ago, something like that. I don't even remember. Mm -hmm. It was a while ago. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so, so, I think we can so do it. Are you saying this for what we should do our ne next Thursday for the stream? Let's do it. Crickets. Unless you have a better yeah. idea. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of these streams, right? It's for us to spend some time doing some engineering work, answer some questions, show some shit off. And if we're going to we're gonna I mean, sit down and build this yeah. thing, why not? Yeah. And I mean, it gives us a break from Kubernetes because we've just that's been so blitzing at Kubernetes stuff. And if I have to look at Tecton again anytime soon, I'll strangle myself. <laughs> not in a good way. Next, <laughs> ne next week, I'll wear my Tectonic shirt. Nice. Nice. So, 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 Kevin, you want to join us next week then? Uh, yeah, I, I have to check my my schedule on my calendar first. Uh, I don't have that up, but tentatively, yes. Awesome. But we'll have well, our people talk to your people. And yeah, they'll yeah, this yeah. Out. They'll they'll call. You know, people. Well, peoples will call peoples. <laughs> oh, well, we have one last question here. Um, I'm not very aware of Swift. How much runtime is carried by the Swift app? So uh, maybe I can answer that real quick. Uh, Swift is just a language that was read, written by the Apple ecosystem um, or Apple company. Uh, and you can run it on both Mac and Linux. So as long as you can compile, which there are the instructions to compile on the, um, on the GitHub repo, uh, you can run Octa. Octa? Yeah. Octa. Um, I keep saying Octa, like the... the company to like sign into things or whatever yeah yeah no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah it's it's pretty straightforward um, it's a, it's actually a whole lot easier to build on linux than it is on apple as we've proven today <laughs> <laughs> yes like like uh it's a like it's actually uh it draws a lot from objective c uh the question is it like c sharp as a runtime but not c uh Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, unless we got anything else, I think I'm I'm ready for uh, a five o'clock beer. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's mm -hmm. beer thirty, right? Yes, sir. All right. Well, uh, everybody, say bye. 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 Thanks for having me. Yeah. Th thanks for coming, man. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Now we're actually gonna go. Okay. Bye. Yeah.